Hi, welcome back. I want to have a chit chat with you today about what do we do when we've lost our crafty mojo. 2020 hit hard. It hit a lot of us really, really, really hard. And it depleted us. It depleted us of our creativity. It depleted us of our energy. It depleted us of our... We ran dry on our emotional banks, on emotional levels, on our physical levels, even tested our spiritual levels in some ways. And then we come to 2021, and it's a new beginning, and we're all excited, and it's like, then we go... Oh, where do we begin? And I found myself going, I was so looking forward to 2021, new beginning. And usually there's all this creativity and all of these things and everything that happen at the beginning of the year. And I was just stuck. I was so stuck. And so I started doing certain things, five things. I've written them down so that I don't forget any of them that I want to share with you that might help you in losing your crafty mojo. And the first thing I did is I set a goal to organize and clean out and declutter and de-stash my crafty area and make sure that everything had a place and it what could be in its place instead of piles of it here and piles of projects here and piles of because I started projects in 2020 that never got finished and I had them piled in different baskets in different places all over my craft area I rearranged my craft area and did re, re placed things and everything it but while doing that and I did it in small chunks I didn't do it all at once try don't try to do it all at once I gave myself a whole month to get it done <laughs> and it you know it's not ever going to be completely done because I'm always bringing new things in or I'm pulling things out to work and then I've got to put them back away or whatever. So it's never ever going to be completely clean all the time. But by doing this and say like I'm going through my sequence, I know how much I have of them. Do I need to buy more? Do I need to get more? I know what colors I have, what colors I need more of what I have to work with and if you sit there and shake the sequence little cases of sequence the sound of them just sparks all this joy and all this stuff in me and the sparkle of them helps lift my spirit to the point that I want to start creating but I didn't allow myself to start creating yet then I went through all my papers, and I went through all my scraps, and I color-coded them, and I put them at, um, coin to their size, and then I went through my tools, and I cleaned them all up, and put them all together in one area. Went through all my adhesives. I didn't know I had as many <laughs> adhesives as I did. I actually had to make two places for adhesives, because I'm always buying extra whenever... I'm at the store and so I didn't know I don't need any extra adhesive right now <laughs> you know but as we're touching and laying our hands on and it doesn't matter if it's a little piece of paper this size if we touch it and we see it and we remember past projects that we made with it and we feel it and it sparks creativity and it gives me ideas of Oh, I remember when I made such and such, and I write it down on a little list. I want to remake that. I want to do that. That's an idea. 
but I didn't allow myself to make. I just kept clinging and kept organizing and everything. And as the ideas and as the inspiration would hit, I'd write it down on a list. And I just slowly worked through. And then when I finally got to the point where clinging was not being inspirational, it was becoming a chore, I stopped. And I moved to step two. Not that I won't go back to the clinging part as I need to, but I moved to step two. And step two does not involve making either. It involves a piece of paper and a pen. I cannot do step two. And I recommend that nobody does step two digitally. Don't do it on your phone or your computer. It does not spark the creativity that actual writing things down sparks in you. The movement of your hand when you write actually sparks creativity. That is psychologically been proven. So use a pen and paper and make a list of all the things that you use pretty much on every project. For me, it's flowers, bows, um, rosettes, butterflies, cut up hearts, um, almost in almost everything. Well, I would probably say eight out of ten happy mails that I send have an ATC or a memory dex card in them. So think of things that that on this list that you're writing down, think of things that if you are a tag person then you send tags almost every in almost every package, write that down on your list. If <laughs> you send little embellishment packages in almost every every um, happy mail that you send, then write that down on your list. But um, no big projects, just the things that you typically use all the time on the number two, which would bring us to number three. Okay, the third thing to do to help with your mojo. We haven't even created yet. This is just sparking inspiration, sparking um, creativity within you, building it up inside of you. We don't want to start making too soon because if we start making too soon or we jump into challenges or swaps too soon, we will overwhelm ourselves and that can be even more hindrance to getting our crafty mojo back. So we don't want to do too much, but we get to, on step three, we get to start making. Now we're going to go back to our list that we made in number two, not our inspirational list that we were making in number one, but in our, what we use all the time. We use die cuts all the time, so we know, okay? So we get to go back to our list on number two, and even if it's only for 15 minutes a day, we're going to make something from the list on number two. Maybe it's ATCs. I, I can't do 15 minute days because it takes me 15 minutes to just get everything laid out and get get all that creativity to build up high enough for me to start. Now, that's if I'm counting 15 minutes. I see that Susan, Susan Tucker has some of her stuff pre-made before she starts her 15 minutes. I can handle that if I did it that way. But for me, I want to sit down and like, if I'm going to create, I want to sit down and create 10 to 20 ATCs. Boom, get them done. I have the miss out. I have everything out in front of me. Let me do 10 to 20 of them at a time. Then I can clean up that miss and move on to the next project. 
that's just the way my brain thinks. But we're going to start making from our list number two. We don't want to jump into swaps and inspirations and challenges and bigger projects. We want to stay small. We want to make those flowers. We want to make those butterflies. We want to make those bows. We want to build our stash up a little bit. We want, it's, we're making, but we're not making anything that we have to have a deadline to. We're starting to just make. And I suggest that you do this for one week straight. That you made something every single day for a week straight before you move on to step four. That you have at least got yourself into that. Okay, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to make. I'm going to spend the time today making something. Da -da -da -da. Then when we get to step four, I suggest very strongly that you enter three to five. No more than five. Three is about a good number of very simple challenges. Very, very simple challenges of your YouTube friends. Um, people who, like Kathy's favorite things, is asking for an ATC. That's all she's asking for. That's a simple challenge. Um, BD Bomb Bomb is asking for one banner piece. She's not asking for a full banner. She's asking for one banner piece. That's a simple challenge. Um, somebody's asking for a sequence mix. That's a simple challenge. Um, keep it very, very, very simple. And don't move on to step five until you have completed three and four completely completed them they're in the mail they've been sent do not move forward and if you feel like you're losing it or you start getting overwhelmed or anything go back to step one go back there like i said cleaning and organizing is always going to be there go back to step one and you can jump around just don't jump ahead you know you can go back and forth. It's like, oh, I think I need to go back and make sure that I get another week straight of stash building. Or I need to go back and write some more things on my list. Or I need, in, during each one of these steps, you're going to keep an inspiration list over there too. Because when we get to step five, we're going to start working on our inspirational list and we can start making things for a swap. We can enter a swap. And we can enter um, group swap or we can enter individual swaps or whatever. But at, at any point, if you start getting overwhelmed, then I want you to stop everything that you're doing. Like, say your swap says, um, let me see. Your swap says that you need a memory dex, a package of embillies, some flowers, goodies, and a crafter's choice in your swap. That's five things, plus packaging. It makes six things that we need for the swap. And all of a sudden, you find yourself getting overwhelmed or, or whatever. Stop right there. Get you out six baskets. And put all, everything that you need for your memory decks into one basket. Everything you need for your flowers in one basket. Everything you need to make your embellishments in one basket. Everything, split them up into the little baskets, including that six package packet, basket. Everything you need for packaging is in that sixth basket. You have six baskets in front of you. Take Five of them and put them aside. Take one down and complete that basket. Complete everything in that basket that has to be done and put it away before you reach for the next basket. It will actually help you clear your mind and not get so overwhelmed. And that can block your mojo. 
and we don't want you to block your mojo because we're just trying to get it get the snowball rolling so that will help you another thing is if you start entering swaps and challenges try to enter swaps and challenges that are asking for the same type of element like um crafty sue is crafter's choice um lauren's crafter's choice donna dreams is crafter's choice so make your crafter's choice the same thing for each one of them and that will help too to not get you overwhelmed you're not like well Donna Dreams, I have five I need to make there, and then I have one here and one here, and now I've got seven different projects that I'm working on because they're all different things that I just took seven different things off my inspiration list. No, 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 no. One thing off of your inspiration list, complete it three to five times, and send it. Then you take another thing off your inspiration, do it two or three times, Send it. If it's ATC cards, like with me, ATC cards, memory decks is what I do all the time. I try to make 10 to 20 ATC or memory decks every month. And like this month, I ended up sending out 9 of the 10 that I've made so far. And um, I only have one to set aside for to get me going at the beginning of next month but I have one in the backup and I will be making more of course <laughs> as our ATC cards and memory decks so that gives you an idea of how to get your mojo going hopefully these five steps remember that if you get stuck at any time you can go back and do any of the five steps it doesn't matter if your crafty mojo snowball is going and going and going and then all of a sudden you're blocked you can go back and do any of these steps at any time which will help you and keep your list keep your what you always need list and your inspiration list and just add to it through time so that you always have that to look at so that when you get to the point where I don't even know where to begin you don't have to begin at the cleaning and organization stage until next time happy crafting remember I love you bye for now